What is going on, Diesel Nation? We're excited to have you guys with us today on the Diesel Podcast. Today, we're going to be chatting with Vinny Himes, who's backed by popular demand, and I wanted to chat with him a bit about the uh, recent news with Cummins and the EPA, and then also catch up with him on some different maybe trends or things he's seeing with uh, trucks needing service in the shop. So it's going to be a great conversation. If you're watching this on YouTube and aren't subscribed, make sure and click the subscribe button, like, comment, let us know what you think about the episode. If there's a particular guest or topic that you'd like to have on, we're always checking your feedback on there and love to be able to get your suggestions on the future episodes. Before we get to the podcast, I want to remind you guys, our friends over at Kershaw Knives have a 40% off MSRP code for you. If you use code 2024DIESEL40 at kershaw.kaiusa.com. It's a great way to save some money, get some really cool gear. I need a knife for hunting, fishing, EDC around the job site. I've got a bunch of different choices to really meet any budget. And there's different blade steels you can pick from, different uh, blade shapes, handle design. So if you're in the market, definitely make sure head on over to their website and use code 2024DIESEL40 for 40% off FSRP. All right, let's get to today's podcast with Vinny and asking him his thoughts on the Cummins EPA situation and then also some trends he's seeing in the, in the shop with trucks that needing to be fixed. Vinny, you're back by popular demand to uh, be on the diesel podcast. We can pick your brain about stuff going on with uh, customer trucks, diesel shops, what's going on in diesel. So welcome back to the podcast. Appreciate it, man. Good to be back. Appreciate you rocking the hat. It was really cool to uh, to see when we shipped one out to... The man, the myth, the legend, Vinny Himes. Yeah, I had no problem getting the tracking emails from you, but when you sent me the Zoom invite today, it shot, shot as a spam. I'm like, <laughs> brilliant. <laughs> no, I appreciate it. I love the hat. They're great. <laughs> well, I know a lot of our listeners are going to be excited to have you back. They enjoy, I think, the way that you convey information and you answer questions and you're just a straight shooter. And one of the biggest things that's happened recently was Cummins getting fined by the EPA. And I, I haven't jumped full on into all the information that's out there, but you work at a diesel shop, you know, hundreds of people are calling you a week, tons of trucks going in and out. What are you hearing from people that own these trucks? And like with the news that they, you know, th that they heard about. And, and I think the, uh, the recalls or, or whatever it is that uh, Ram's doing to update the flashes and tuning in them. Man, that's actually a great topic. Um, being naive to it, um, we've been getting phone calls about this for years. Um, I guess it started, I don't really keep a time. I mean, I talk to so many people and I get so many phone calls. I don't really categorize everything unless it's of like utmost importance. But I want to say 2020, uh, mid-COVID, you know, COVID was going on. People are closing down businesses. People are closing down states. You know, a lot of these automotive parts are made in, you know, Michigan, Motor City. Uh, and that area of the world is very democratic, democratically ran. And so lots of stupid state policies that shut down a lot of these auto manufacturers. And so we started really feeling it. I want to say in 2020, um, you know, things that you just order and take for, for granted, you know, like I need a Cummins water pump. Oh, they're on back order. Like, how is that even a thing? Well, when the entire state that's producing the product is shut down, you, you start feeling it. And so there were specific emissions parts that were on massive back orders, six, eight months. And uh, the joke around the shop was, I'll bet they wish, you know, I'll bet the government wishes they hadn't cracked down on delete so hard because we had municipalities uh city vehicles fire trucks ambulances broke down just lined up out in our in our parking lot and our parking lot's massive it's nine and a half acre commercial lot and so usually we try to keep all the trucks behind the chain link fence behind the shop and uh it got so bad with back orders on everything you know this is a massive spectrum of of you know glow plug wiring harnesses for six liters going on back order to uh Cummins turbos going on back order, EGR valves going on back order, death sending units going on back order. And so we've got trucks, not just personal people's privately owned vehicles, but lots of municipalities and emergency response vehicles that were stranded at our shop for months and months and months because they couldn't get these parts. And so a lot of them would, they would take them off our lot and they would take it to a shop that would delete it for them. And, uh, you know, those guys are still out there and it is what it is, you know, I guess good for them while they're making, making hay while the sun's shining kind of a thing, but 
it, it's frustrating when you're told that you can't do something because it's illegal and you've got all these vehicles broke down at your shop that you know you could fix. You know, you could fix them once and for all, but your hands are tied and now you can't get the parts because the government that said that it's illegal shut down their state, you know, and so it's just really ridiculous. But we were getting a lot of these phone calls for these specific parts that were on back order and we were losing work left and right because we could not fulfill the need because we couldn't get the parts. And, um, you know, then a lot of them were going back to the dealership because they were still under warranty. And so, you know, now we're getting phone calls like, oh, hey, you know, ever since this whole coming things, Cummins thing dropped and uh, really went viral that day. We're getting phone calls from people that took their truck back and your viewers got to understand that a lot of our clientele are very, very naive. They very they know to put diesel in it and they know to take it to the shop when the check engine light comes on. They know to take it to the shop for service and maintenance. That's about it. So most of them are just getting in, plugging in their seatbelt, driving to where they got to go, getting out. And so they have no clue any of this is going on. They're not tied into social media, especially not diesel related social media. So now these people are calling us. They're like, I took my truck back to the dealership. They said there was a recall. They did whatever they did. My truck hasn't consumed death in two or three years. And now all of a sudden I'm using it regularly. And it's funny because you start seeing this pattern, you know, it's the same phone call over and over and over and over. And you're like, holy crap, this really was a thing. Like they really were shutting the emission systems down. And I have to assume it was because those parts were on back order. It makes sense that the the pattern and the timeline makes sense. And so it's very frustrating for the customer because they obviously have owned the vehicle since brand new. So they experienced it when the emissions was working properly and they were used to putting death in every other time they filled up. And then they went for a period of years where they consumed very little to none. And now all of a sudden their vehicle is consuming again. So it's a, uh, it's definitely real and, and we've definitely experienced it and we will continue to experience it. I'm sure for a long time. Uh, it's just bizarre to think, you know, you hear things like this in the social media realm and you hear about it on the news and, you know, it's kind of like so over the top and it's such a big deal. You're like, that'll never happen in our small town. And then boom, your phone rings and you're like, holy crap, it's happening in our small town. So uh, definitely a real thing and, and definitely frustrating for the customer that owns the vehicle because now they're having to put death in it again and they haven't for a couple of years. Yeah. And that was the thing with the, the headline was, I mean, massive. It grabbed anyone's attention if you're into diesel trucks, because we haven't heard about it affecting an iconic brand like Cummins right. and Ram and everything fit together. And there wasn't a whole lot of information. And I think more has trickled out and, and we hope to be able to cover different angles of it. But my first thought went to, okay, what at the, at the shop level are those guys seeing? Because you build these relationships. You've talked about it on, on other episodes. You build these relationships with people, I imagine maybe even over decades with yeah. someone. So they trust you to take their vehicle that they make money with, or it, it takes their family on vacation or they use every day. And then they call you. And I was just curious, like, you know, what are they saying? Like, now, if you had to just pick a number out, is it something where, a handful of calls a day come in from people or is it more sporadic yeah. or does it does the floodgates open uh right now it's just a handful of people and and it's it's a couple times a day every day we we feel a lot of phone calls so and we're not just local you know we're social media is an amazing tool and it's allowed us to have clientele all over the world um you know i ship parts to australia annually I ship parts to a few customers in in uh, Norway. Uh, I have some really good customers, uh, Patrick and Michael in Sweden. And uh, those guys have been customers. I've literally watched their kids grow up and move away from home on <laughs> social media, you know. And those guys have been customers of mine since before I was an alligator. And, um, yeah, I mean, it's it's crazy the the number of calls we feel, you know, they're not all customers either. A lot of times it's just, Hey, we saw you on the diesel podcast and this is happening in, in my personal situation with my Cummins. And so, yeah, it's a couple times a day and uh, it's every day. So I didn't really know how to answer those concerns or, or those questions, 
you know, because the first thing I always go to when they say, oh, you know, I'm having issues with my truck. And I'm like, well, is it deleted? And 99% of the time they say yes. So now we're starting to feel more of these phone calls where it's, is it deleted? Well, no, it's still all stock. And I'm like, ah, you know, I don't have as much experience with that because deleting was the way for so long. And so it's, it's interesting to be an old dog learning new tricks with these new things that we're starting to encounter. And um, now I kind of have an answer. You know, I couldn't answer these people like, well, why didn't I have to put it definite for two years and now it's using it? And I'm like, ah, maybe your injectors are getting dirty. Maybe the sensors aren't working properly, you know, bring it in and we can check everything and, and flash an update to it. Or if they're across the country, you know, I got a, a guy that calls me regularly from, Oregon. I've got some really good customers up in Michigan, uh, Wisconsin area, uh, all over the Midwest, and starting to see more and more of these questions of, you know, why didn't it work that way for so long? And now all of a sudden I do this update, my truck runs like crap. It's got less power. I'm getting worse fuel economy, and I'm having to put definite every time I fill up. So definitely a real thing. Pretty bizarre. I think we were talking a little bit before the podcast about the dark side of this from the truck owner side. In that if they're used to the truck operating a certain way and now it doesn't because they, you know, got this, this notice, they took it in. Are those people who didn't delete, are they now asking about them? Are they now, you know, jumping on the internet and searching and stuff like that where maybe they weren't before or probably 100%. weren't before? The hundred percent and the saddest thing, you know, I, I don't know if it's sad or not, but people that reached out years ago, years ago, you know, Hey, I just bought this Ram. Is there anything I can do to it? Back when deleting was the norm and, and nobody was enforcing anything or doing a very, very poor job of it. If they were enforcing anything, um, you know, it was like, Oh yeah, you can do a tuner and take an exhaust and truck will pick up four or five miles of the gallon or do this and that. Well, I'm going to wait for my warranty to run out. And if these customers or anything like me. I mean, I drive 10 miles to the office in the morning and I sit there for nine hours and I drive 10 miles home at night and my truck gets parked. So <laughs> to get through the warranty mileage wise or even years wise, you know, these people are calling back years later, like, oh yeah, you told me, you know, X amount of dollars, we could do this, this and that. And I'm like, oh yeah, that's a thing of the past. That doesn't even exist anymore. Like we can't do that for you now. And then, you know, you tell them that it's illegal and they're like, well, I don't want to get anybody in trouble. So, you know, I guess what do I got to do? And I'm like, you got to spend $10,000 on junky parts that are going to fail again. So that's very, very, very frustrating knowing that it can be fixed, knowing that you can save the customer their hard earned dollars and fix it once and for all. And then being told that it's illegal is very, very frustrating. Um, and there's, there's no good bedside manner to breaking that news to the customer it's just you're screwed i gotta take a whole bunch of your money and we gotta buy these junk parts and put them back on your truck and i have to promise you look you in the eye shake your hand and tell you that's going to do it again um that's a hard conversation to have you know that would be like having a heart attack and going to the doctor and they cut you open and they put a couple stents in button you up and they're like hey those stents are junk so they're going to deteriorate over the next three years and you're probably <laughs> gonna have a heart attack again yeah um it's just, it sucks being professional at something and knowing there's a solution that you're not allowed to sell, you know, and it's not like we're, we were out here chopping babies' heads off or selling crack cocaine and, you know, poisoning people to death. We were making their trucks run better and we were increasing their fuel economy. We were saving the planet one plastic jug of death at a time that they weren't having to put in anymore. So it was knowing that we could help people and that we're being told it's illegal is very frustrating. What do you think, thinking about the kind of the bigger picture and then looking forward, because I think whenever I talk to people who aren't involved in diesel and the, the question, it's such a hard question to ask because people, someone will say, oh, what do you do a podcast about? And if I say diesel trucks, there's a good percentage of them that look at me like I'm crazy. Like it's the big polluting black cloud looking thing that they've always seen. And it's just, it has from wherever they get their information, it has this negative connotation around it. So it's always very hard to explain. You do a podcast about diesel trucks, but <laughs> like that aside is what do you think from your experience and perspective, the future is going to look like with these trucks that, 
like the customers that you have that drive them, use them for work. Cause it seems to be coming from so many different angles. Um, you know, you talked about the supply chain and the challenges that provided. And then now we have this, this, uh, you know, issue with Cummins and these recalls. And then it, it just feels like diesel truck owners are under assault from so many different angles. I'm curious what your opinion is on the future of owning these trucks is in five years, maybe not even five years, maybe two. Well, I am hopeful. Um, you know, I follow Corey Willis very closely and, and we message each other back and forth from time to time, especially about this topic as we've both been under the firing squad, to, so to speak. And I think Corey's getting the right ears. He's getting the attention of the right people. And uh, I'm hopeful that they'll see how ridiculous this is because when Corey can tune a vehicle and prove that he can make it run cleaner without this crap than the manufacturers making it run with this crap, that just seems ludicrous. Like that is just insanity on another level. Like, like there's insanity and then there's promoting insanity after you're aware of it. And that is literally what this is. Like the government has seen the people at the top of the EPA that Corey has dealt with have seen the data that Corey's presented and turned a blind eye to it and said, Nope, we don't care. So it would be like going into California and saying, Hey, you guys just had a massive wildfire. Your trees are no longer producing oxygen. Your people are going to be getting sick. You've got a smog issue already. We would love to come in and plant 10 billion trees for you, clean the oxygen up, help thin out the smog. And the government would say, that's illegal. You can't plant trees here. That's what we're dealing with. That's the level of stupidity and insanity that we are dealing with in this industry with this particular topic. We can make this better. We can save the customer fuel economy, which means they're burning less fuel. That right there just seems like, oh, no brainer. You can get better fuel economy by taking this off. Freaking do it. Do all of them. And it's literally corruption at the highest level is what we're dealing with and it will as long as people can get rich my dad said it best when i was a little kid our country is ran off inefficiency and greed if we make something efficient we get crucified for it because somebody at the top stopped making money you know the guy that's digging the crap out of the ground to put inside the diesel particulate filters losing money if we can take it off and make the truck run cleaner the manufacturer that's producing the parts loses money if we can take it off and make it run cleaner. So that's all this is. It's a giant money grab from every angle. It's the manufacturers don't want to lose money, so they don't want us to be allowed to do this. The EPA can make money by crucifying us for doing it. And so we're just we're all stuck here promoting stupidity because it's the law. And that is once again very frustrating. You know, knowing you're doing the wrong thing for the customer because it's law it just seems asinine to me. You know, it's just, it's illegal to go out and shoot people, but, you know, it's also illegal to put an aftermarket exhaust on your personal truck that you paid $80,000 for because it's law. I don't, I don't know how we got to the point where we're comparing those two things. Right. Do, um, I wanted to ask you, because people, when we went through uh, th that, I think it was a three-part episode we did one weekend, and we were talking about Duramax, Cummins, Power Stroke, problems and fixes, things mm -hmm. that, that you've seen. Have any new things popped up with any three of the brands with maybe some things we didn't mention a year, year and a half ago that you're seeing are, are starting to be issues? Yes. Well, issues suck. Solutions are awesome. So the issue for years was the CP4 felling on the Duramaxes. It was super dramatic. It was, you know, trucks with 30,000 miles on them. We covered that in that episode about the LMLs. And, you know, trucks with 30,000 miles are coming in with scattered CP4 pumps. And, you know, you're, you're having to take $10,000 of that customer's money to replace the CP4 with another CP4, which was frustrating. Uh, 
eight injectors, lines, rails, regulators. I always sold a fast with it to try and help prevent it from happening again. And it was starting to trickle into this into the industry that the CP4s on the six seven Fords were failing. Uh, Ford did a really good job of putting a factory uh, high pressure, low pressure pump, if that makes sense. Most low pressure pumps, you know, five nine Cummins, six seven Cummins, six four Power Strokes. You know, they're they're operating around twelve psi, fifteen psi. The factory fuel pump on a six seven Ford operates at sixty sixty five psi. So it was it was a really high pressure pump to be a low pressure pump. And so they're, I think they, I know, I don't think anything, I know that they had less problems with the CP4s felling than the Duramaxes did, where they were just put into a horrible environment of, here's a super crappy pump with no support. It's just going to try and suck its self-supply and then pressurize that vacuum supply and feed eight injectors. It was just a terrible situation on the Duramaxes. And so... We started seeing more of that. We are seeing more of that on the Fords now. They're getting older. These pumps are getting weaker. Um, they're kind of being put into that same scenario where it can pull its own supply through a deadlift pump and then the pump grenades or they get contaminated fuel and they don't really have good factory water air separation capabilities. So that was getting frustrating because while it was a huge problem on the Duramaxes for years, we could put a fast on when we we could extend the life noticeably. Like I could shake the customer's hand and say, Hey, we just put this support system in place for your CP4 and we will hopefully not see you ever again. Uh, and that has been the case on a large scale. Um, I've got literally three customers that have come back where we've replaced their CP4 and put a bass on. I've only had three out of thousands that have come back with a failed CP4 after we install a FAST. So a FAST is a really good investment for the CP4 Duramax guys. Then the CP3 kits came available that didn't require tuning. That's the fix. So we started rocking those out by the hundreds, probably into the thousands now. I don't really keep track of that because it's not on my radar, but um, it's a it's a fix and it works and it's great. Seeing that pattern start with the six sevens there was nothing for us to offer all we could do and the customers are saying it you know they're like they're like well my truck just stumbled going down the road and then i pulled over and fired it back up and i got to where i was going but now i'm nervous i don't want to drive it so i'm going to bring it in and then we call them we're like hey we pulled the regulator out of your driver's side rail it's full of metal your pump's coming apart and it's going to be eighty eight hundred dollars or ten grand depending on the situation to get you back on the road again and then they're like well is this an upgrade is this a better pump and we're like no we're putting the same piece of crap in there that failed and that sucks and so you know that's back to the heart attack situation like i can't tell you we fixed anything we just replaced it you know and we're like and we were selling fasts on the six sevens as well you know it's like hey we did this on the duramaxes it worked you had a really great pump this is better so we were always trying to help wherever we could with an aftermarket product to replace a, a weak or crappy factory product. What has massively changed since the last time we talk, talked was the DCR pumps came out. And I was really apprehensive to sell them. I didn't know anything about the DCR pump. I didn't know where it came from. I didn't know its track record. And... Uh, <laughs> I made a stupid post in a private Facebook group that kind of upset the owner of SNS and I didn't know who he was. I only my only dealings with SNS up until that day that he contacted me was we had bought injectors from him for our sled pulling trucks. I was not an SNS dealer. We didn't promote or push their products. Um, they wouldn't set us up as a dealer years ago because there was another shop down the road from us that was an SNS dealer. So uh, they were just kind of off my radar, out of my scope. I didn't care about them. And so this DCR pump thing came out. It really caught my attention and I was like, I'm going to keep an eye on this. I don't know what it is, but I'm going to keep an eye on it. And so then, you know, it was rumor mill, rumor mill. It's going to come out this month. It's going to come out that month. It's going to come out in two months, but nothing happened for like a long time. And then it finally came out and a discussion was started up in one of the diesel shop owners groups and i've been in the group for years i'm not a shop owner but 
I've been in the group for many, many years since I was at Alligator. And somebody said, you know, who's going to push these things? And so everybody's kind of chiming in with their own opinions. And uh, Zeb Beard and I, Zeb, his shop is Strokers. Have you had Zeb on the show? No, not yet. Dude, you got to get him on the show. He's great. Um, super good guy, very, very moral and ethical. And and I like to bounce ideas off him. And, and so we kind of both have a very similar mindset. Why are we going to sell something to our customer that we, for one, we don't know if it's good Two, we're not making any money on it. So why the heck would we sell it as a, you know, a business standpoint at the end of the day, we have to pay bills. We have to pay shop payments. We have to pay power bills, massive power bills. We got to pay tool bills. We're going to pay payroll. We got all this massive overhead that we have to deal with. And so when you look at a product and there's like a hundred dollar profit margin on a $2,000 ticket, no, I'm not selling it. Like I am setting myself up and I'm setting my customer up to have a very poor interaction because if that pump fails, and I only made a hundred bucks on it. For one, the customer is going to expect a free tow. I spent $4,800 at your shop. I would need you to come pick my truck up. It's down. And I'm sitting here looking at the ticket. And I'm like, yeah, bro, we made like a hundred dollars profit on that part. And like 350 bucks in payroll after we paid payroll and all the other bills and expenses, our markup, our hourly rate only made us X amount of dollars. I can't afford to send a $200 tow to you. Um, get it to us and we'll, we'll do what's right. We'll get with the manufacturer. It's their warranty, not ours. So their part failed. Our installation didn't fail. And so the customer's instantly mad at me because all he's seeing is he spent $4,800. He doesn't give a shit about my profit margins or, or where we're at at the end of the day. All he cares about is he spent $4,800 and his truck's down and now he's got to pay $300 to get it towed back to me to hopefully get a free pump replacement. And so... The DCR pump thing came up. I looked at the profit margins. They were absolutely terrible. And I made a, in hindsight, kind of a crappy comment about it. And it was like day one, like, hey, we're shipping these out. And the whole industry's like, hell yeah. And me and Zeb Beard are like, screw that thing. We're not selling that. It's maybe a great product. We don't know. We have no experience with it. It's day one. You can tell me whatever you want to tell me. And so I made a kind of a poopy comment and... This guy private messages me and I'm like, I don't even know who you are. And he was like, it was kind of along the lines of, wow, way to shoot us down on day one, take the wind out of our sail. And I'm like, who are you? And he's like, I'm the owner of S&S. And I was like, oh, my bad. <laughs> and so the day went by and I was very busy and the phones were ringing off the hook. And I, I saw he called into the shop. You know, I was like, well, we can do this on private message or we can talk. And he called in a couple of times and I just couldn't connect with him. So I ended up calling him back at the end of the day and I stayed late. I stayed really late. Like we talked for a long time and the end of the conversation was, I want to try this out. I'm not sold on it. I'm going to oversell it because I have to turn a profit. I have to set myself and my customer up to have a great experience. So I'm going to mark it up a thousand bucks. That helps me cover free toes. Um, the other aspect that customers don't think of from a shop side of things is you got a technician in the back that worked on a truck and you go back there and you're like, Hey, this is a warranty job. <laughs> you're not getting paid for it. Guess where that truck's going? Back burner reality is the mechanics got to feed a family as well. So he's going to try to turn out as many tickets as he can to, you know, they get their hourly rate, but then they make more money based off the hours that they turn. And it's, it's called book rate for people that don't know about it. And it's a real thing. So that mechanic, if he does three warranties on a crappy product that I sold, because I'm in sales, he's mad at me. He's mad at the manufacturer for making a crappy product. He's mad that the truck came back that he did nothing wrong on. So the truck's going on the back burner. It's not going to get turned around right away. But if I charge enough on the front end to where I can say, hey, bro, this is a warranty deal. I marked it up really good. So we can afford to pay you to fix it. So that whole conversation was had and we sold one and we sold it high. And I told the customer that he's like, man, I can get online. And I can buy it for this. Why are you charging that? And I explained exactly what I just said. And he's like, 
I get that. I want the free tow. So I will overpay just in case I have a problem. I want that free tow. I want to be put first in line. I don't want to go on the back burner. I don't want my truck sitting up there for two weeks waiting for somebody to get some free time. And so we sold one. And then we sold another one. And then we sold another one. And I was really nervous. Like I just had this feeling in the pit of my stomach, like something's going to go wrong with these pumps. They're all going to fail at the same time. And we've seen it before in the past with other manufacturers and other parts. Something new comes along. You get excited about it because it's it's not a let's take the old crappy part off and put in the same crappy part on. In your head, you're like, this is an upgrade. I'm selling an upgrade. I'm doing the right thing for the customer. You sell a thousand of them. And then six months later, the first one fails. And you're like, oh, crap. Hopefully it's just one. And then the next one and the next one. And then it snowballs on you. The next thing you know, your entire parking lot's full of these things that you thought was good. And it turns out to be bad. And so that's a real, that's a reality for us at the shop side of things. And uh, so I was really nervous. Like I just, I didn't want to sell them. It's easier for me to sell a CP4 from Ford that's got a two year unlimited mileage warranty. I know I'm covered. I know that if that CP4 fails, I get to send Ford a bill for the labor, the part, everything. We get covered. So I get to fast track it through warranty in the back. I get paid all the way through from Ford and it's corporate Ford who's got billions of dollars. It's not some little company that I don't know anything about that I have to rely on. And I know they're going to, I know they're not going to pay us. So I was really nervous about this DCR pump upgrade. And then uh, SNS dropped a video on YouTube, on their YouTube about the DCR pump, one that they'd installed for a customer. And they just, called them back to say, hey, let's get that pump off and run through it. It's been on there for long enough. It's got miles on it. It's got age on it. Let's see what what it looks like inside and we'll throw a fresh one in your truck. So they pulled that pump off and tore it down and it was full of rust. The entire fuel system was full of rust due to an aftermarket filtration unit that the customer had on his truck. Knowing that that pump ate all that rust and emulsified watered down diesel fuel and lived got me really excited it, it it gave me not even hope it gave me security in selling these things and now i no longer sell you know any any time a, a cp4 failed on a six seven ford in the past we were selling a disaster kit from ford which came with a cp4 pump eight injectors both fuel rails all the lines regulators sensors everything that had fuel go through it it's brand new and that job, depending on the shop, I think our our labor rate and our markup on parts, that job's like eighty nine hundred dollars. I've heard ten thousand dollars. I've I've seen tickets where people have paid twelve thousand dollars for it. So everybody's doing different things, but it's a big ticket regardless. And we're no longer doing that. We're now selling a DCR pump, eight injectors, both fuel rails, and a fast where we can and a factory lift pump where we can't. So some of our accounts are commercial. They will not pay for aftermarket products that could be deemed performance. And a lot of them look at a fast fuel system as a performance upgrade, so they won't pay for it. So we just put a factory fuel pump back on those guys. But DCR pumps everywhere, and that's huge, um, especially for your audience and the people that are going to see this video, to know that you have something hope, something hopeful to look forward to uh, I want to say it's a 35 horsepower increase with no tuning required. And so that's been really awesome. Um, my stupid dog's trying to eat trash. <laughs> Ragnar, get out of there. <laughs> There'll be a douchebag somewhere else. But yeah, that's that's been great to give that huge customer base of ours some good news, you know, because it was 2011 to last year. We're giving them bad news. Like, yeah, we're putting the same piece of crap back on your truck that we that just failed. And that sucked. So to tell those guys that there's hope, to tell them there's an upgrade, that's really big for us. Um, to answer your question as far as new failures or new issues, it's more of the same. Emissions sucks. It doesn't work. Um, it didn't work in 2007 and a half, and it doesn't work today. So 
lots of DEF system failures, sending unit failures, DEF heater failures, DEF injector failures, EGR valves still getting clogged up and stuck. Um, I will say we see fewer EGR issues on the 6.7 Power Stroke platform than we see on any other platform. Um, uh, one new one that does fall into your question. The grid heater nut vibrating loose in the 6.7 Cummins and melting its way through the grid heater and then running through the intake valves and destroying the engine completely. That's become a very popular issue. And the good news there is Banks has addressed it and they came out with an intake horn and an intake tray plate that completely eliminates the grid heater and turns it into more of a glow plug or a glow plug style. It's a heater coil. Um, so it's an intake heater, kind of like what the old 7.3s had. Very similar to the old 7.3 style intake heater. So we've been doing a lot of those and not even, I've never even seen the failure. I've heard about it. I've seen YouTube videos about it. I've seen guys on the six seven or on the six seven Cummins forum Facebook page talking about it. It's never actually happened in our shop. We've never had a truck come into our shop with a grid heater nut melted through and destroyed the engine. Um, but we've installed probably four hundred of those intake elbows on the thirteen and newer Cummins. Um, I've not really heard of it happening on the 07 and a half to twelves. But we've installed a few on those as well, just because the customer read about it or heard about it and doesn't want to deal with it. I know know last year I had SNS on to talk about the DCR pump, and it was one of the coolest products last year. I think the launch was really good because it took the whole automotive diesel social media by kind of by storm. But I think it's yeah, because the Duramax is the LMLs, they had the CP3 conversion, and so you had that positive. Well, it's positive both ways, like you mentioned. If you owned one of those trucks, you don't really want to just replace it with the same thing that just failed. Because in the back of your head, you're gonna be like, "I'm gonna get fifty thousand miles, or thirty thousand miles, or hundred thousand miles out of it, and be right back here." So you, you had that upgrade, and then with the Fords, everything I've read about it, everything you know that we covered on the podcast, the feedback that we've gotten from people has been really great. So I think that was one of the really cool, really helpful products, you know, from last year. So some of these solutions that are coming out before, before uh, we wrapped up the conversation, I wanted to ask you about the L five P because when we did a separate episode about L five P's and you were talking about stuff, people are like, no, they never fail like that. They never break cranks. Have you seen any more of those since we chatted last? Dude, we have got those things lined up at the shop. Um, the broken crank thing, you know, was kind of exclusive to the ambulances, which we we were very honest about that. You know, it wasn't like we were trying to spread some fear mongering. It was just like, hey, what have you seen? That's what we'd seen. Um, I've got a bunch of L5Ps at the shop. Cracked pistons. And I can't blame it on a design flaw every single one of them that is at the shop with a cracked piston has been tuned so when you pull the cylinder heads off and you see the spray pattern you know that starfish spray pattern of the injector on the bottom of the head that's shitty tuning that is all that is um so we've been hit with a wave of those l5ps with cracked pistons and we're doing a pretty cool engine build on one. Uh, we got a customer out of Florida that's been extremely patient with us. Not with us. Uh, we've just been waiting on parts. So he's getting a full billet SoCal crank. Um, Waggler stepped up and made us a set of rods to fit that crank because the Carrillo rods won't work with it. Um, so we've got a bunch of custom machine work from Waggler. And we've got a billet crank from SoCal, which took forever to get. But he's going to be the first guy in the country with a billet crank on a daily driven L5P with a totally custom set of Waggler rods. Um, we sent a set of stock pistons out to be delipped and fly cut, put a SoCal alternate firing camshaft in it for him, um, changing the firing order to avoid a broken crank. And uh, so, yeah, I mean, it's they're just like every other truck. Now we're starting to see their issues. They're, they're getting some age on them. Um, we've done a lot of injection pumps. We've had a lot of L5P injection pump failures. 
there unfortunately as far as i'm aware there is not an upgrade for those right now so we're just putting factory pumps back on them and uh putting fasces on them so it's not it's not on the level of cp4 failure not even close but just it's high pressure fuel systems they're just they're great until they're not. They atomize fuel really well. They produce very low emissions, but they're finicky. And when things go wrong, things go wrong at high pressure and a lot of damage gets done. I think that's where a lot of a lot of people who are listening, they find a, a lot of value because they have those trucks that are under warranty. And if anything happens, they take them to you know the dealership and they're covered. But as these things start to age, we start to see what are these what fails at 150,000, 200, 250,000 miles. Are there any patterns that are seen? And I know that was a lot of the feedback from the uh, other episodes we did was like, well, ask him what, you know, what is a truck towing? How, you know, how many miles are on it? What, right. what, what are people doing with these things? Because they're trying to relate it to their own truck and, and, Absolutely. and be proactive and think, Hey, am I going to run into this? So I always love to pick your brain with what's going on with different trucks or things that can help people um, yeah. avoid some of these bigger ticket items, which, you know, it's fun to spend money on the truck when you want to, but it's not fun when you have to do it. It takes all the fun 100%. out. Of it. it takes all the fun out. Yeah, re- repairs are never fun. Upgrades are awesome. Um, knowing that you're doing something proactive is always easier to spend money on, you know, than something unknown that just snaps up, you know, jumps up and bites you and you weren't ready for it financially. You weren't ready for it at work. You need the truck to get to work tomorrow. It's broke down. Now you're stuck in a rental. Those those situations suck for everybody. It sucks for us because we're a busy shop, which means we're not fast. Um, we are, but we deal with such a massive volume of trucks that, you know, I got five or six trucks a day getting dropped off. We've got 18 people there. So you you can only do so much with the people that you have, the parts that are available. Um, you know, it's just... It's never fun to fix things, but when you're upgrading, when you're doing a a DCR pump conversion, because you saw this episode, you're ordering the part ahead of time. You're not dropping your truck off because there's nothing wrong with it. So definitely for your viewers, the important takeaway for me, for them, because I'm a people person, I want to make people happy. I want to make people laugh. I want people to have fun around me. Um, I don't like those bad situations. I I hate because when I answer the phone, I'm not like, oh, man, how much money can I get out of this guy? I don't get paid commission. I don't give a crap how much you spend at Leadfoot Diesel or if you ever spend money at Leadfoot Diesel. I've had thousands of your viewers that have watched these videos call me at the shop from Timbuktu or Washington State. I'm never getting that guy's money and I don't care. I'm happy to spend 25 minutes on the phone with them and, and tell them, you know, hey, there's this great shop right next door to you. I, I work there. Or I know somebody that works there. Or I sold them parts. I've, I know how the owner thinks they're good, moral people. I love helping people. So if, if the only takeaway from this video is, man, I could spend a little bit of money and be proactive and save myself $10,000. I hope that's what people get from this video, because that's, what's important to me. I don't want you. I, I work my ass off too. I don't want to spend money on my truck repairs. I don't want you to spend money on your truck repairs. <laughs> so anything we can do to help people save money is my 100% my focus. Boy, one, one of the, uh, one of the things I want to do a little different with this episode is I think we took a clip from, I think it was the Duramax episode where I asked you which one's best. And we put it on TikTok, and there was like, I think it's almost 800,000 views now. 800,000, yeah. And you were telling me like, man, so many people were sending me this clip like my phone battery died. And there's a lot of people, I'll see it on YouTube, there'll be comments on your video where they have a specific question, something we were talking about that they wanted to know from you. And I I know you do a great job and you jump onto YouTube and, and try to answer them. But if somebody does have a question for you, or maybe they're in Georgia or they're in Florida and they want to be able to connect with you in Leadfoot Diesel, what is the best way to be able to reach out to you or someone else at the shop to be able to, you know, ask the question of, of something that we covered? Facebook Messenger, honestly. Um, the YouTube comments are hard. It's like the algorithm will hide some of the questions. Um, like, like, I'll get an email that says, hey, so-and-so replied to your comment. And then I'll go and answer that guy. And then I'll scroll down through the comments and there are like 80 other questions that I have to answer because I didn't get a 
uh, notification. I watch Facebook Messenger like a hawk. I get two to 300 Facebook messages a day, specifically about diesel stuff. And I re- I try really hard not to go to bed without answering those. So, you know, I'm stuck for nine hours a day in front of three giant computer screens. And the center one is Facebook, Instagram, all of our Leadfoot Diesel social media is right in front of me. Uh, the screen to the left is for parts ordering. The screen to the right is for looking up labor times and stuff like that. So I, I stay very organized with that. I answer every Facebook question that I get, specifically the, the diesel related ones. You know, if somebody messages me about how to cut up a deer, I might answer it someday, but it's not on my list of very important things to take care of. The diesel industry is what I love and the diesel, the people in the diesel industry is is who I want to help. Uh, so that is my focus. That's 99% of my focus. Like if I'm sitting on the couch with a wife watching a movie at the end of the day and somebody messages me on Facebook about what injectors put in their 12 valve, I'm going to answer that guy. I always appreciate chatting with you. I know you had a, I'm sure a busy day at work you chatting, you know, after hours. So I appreciate your flexibility and, uh, sharing so much knowledge. I, there's so many people that find you know value from it. And I wanted to get your opinion on the Cummins thing. And then also ask about, you know, Duramax and, and power strokes, some other things you're seeing and then solutions that people have. So I appreciate your time today chatting with me, Vinny, look forward to uh, chatting with you again. I'm sure there's going to be some more cool stuff that comes out this year. We can do a follow up and help people keep their trucks on the road. Absolutely. That's what it's all about. And as you said that, I was just thinking like, when are we going to hear about the Duramax tampering and when are we going to hear about the power stroke tampering (laughs) if cummins was doing it they probably weren't the only ones doing it so it'll be interesting to see what happens over the next year for sure and uh definitely man happy to be on any time so look forward to it don't forget diesel fans make sure and head on over to kershaw.kaiusa.com use code 2024 diesel 40 for 40 percent off site wide it's a great way to save some money get some really cool gear so if you need a knife for hunting fishing edc around the job site they've definitely got you covered with a bunch of different choices for blade shape um, uh, blade steel different handle designs and really a whole lineup to meet any budget so definitely head on over check them out use code 2024 diesel 40 for 40 percent off msrp also want to give a shout out to some of our patreon supporters tyler lowen on 23 diesel john j cole all of our other patreon supporters all of you who subscribe on youtube podcast apps follow us on social media we appreciate all your support here in year eight of the diesel podcast and look forward to bringing you more of the content that you want to hear in 2024 Till next time keep the shiny side up